Hi, I'm Mike Annan, Canine Obedience Instructor and Behaviorist. Welcome to the ACE Academy for Canine Educators newsletter tips or quick tips. Uh, today what I want to talk about is prey drive. Uh, I want to give you a quick tip. The, the, the type of prey drive we're talking about is uh, car chasing. So this is a dog uh, that might be struggling on leash, going after cars uh, when they go by on your leash walk, lunging at cars, or becoming overly excited about it. The quick tip I want to give you today is using your sit, stay, and handler's presence, which we've seen in some previous uh, short clip webinars uh, on our newsletter, to create a different reaction from the dog with the car stimulus around or as a car is passing. So, if we simulate my dog being on leash, uh, walking, and a car is coming, uh, typically what you'll see is a dog becoming uh, alert, uh, aware, and uh, looking towards uh, the vehicle. So what we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that our dog is paying attention to us. So there's a couple of tools that we can use. This will also help create a dog having a different association with the vehicle passing. So what I can do is something called a little bit of counter conditioning, and this is what we're going to talk about in this clip today. This means when my dog sees a car and I call my dog's name, they can understand this means I sit and get a reward instead of going after the car. This takes a lot of work and a lot of practice, but it can be quite effective. So the tool we're going to use today is a little bit of a liver treat, and we're going to pretend that uh, this dog's going after a car, I'm going to use the sit stay and get my dog focused on me and I'm going to show you how this would work as a car passes uh, uh, your dog. Okay, So I'm going to be walking down the street, my dog might see a car coming, I'm going to get their attention. Mosaic, sit, watch here, good, stay. Now as the car's passing, the trick is I want to hold the stimulus if I can get them interested in it, just like this in my hand. So we can imagine a car's passing, I still have the reward or scent reward in my hand. The stimulus is going by, which is a car. Once the dog has accomplished that, I can release it. Good, stay, good boy. So I'm driving an association using a little bit of counter conditioning, which is that as a car passes, when I ask for my dog's attention, and you'll note I did that by calling their name, which is going back to those handler's presence uh, webinars we, were, we, we looked at the, in our newsletter as well, getting that focus. Uh, creating a sit and a discipline or an exercise and then creating a stimulus related to me in lieu of the vehicle passing. So the counter conditioning part of it is that the car passing means I sit and I get a very positive uh, stimulus coming from my handler uh, instead of lunging at the car. So we'll have a look at that again. So I'm walking down the street, my dog gets interested in the car, mosaic, get their attention, sit, stay, distract, redirect, counter conditioning, car goes by, release, reward, good, stay, and creating a little bit different of a bond or relationship. So you might say, Mike, I've tried that. I've used the treat. My dog does not go uh, for a treat when a car is passing. Now, this is a very common mistake made by uh, not only dog trainers, but dog owners in that uh, I used the treat when the car was coming, but it didn't work. Now, we've got to remember a couple things. This is not a treat. It's called scent motivation. This is also a really good calibration of how excited your dog is about the stimulus and what is your timing like. So there's two components to that. One is, I've tried the treat once my dog has already become to the highest level of reaction to it, which means I'm walking on leash the car's going by, my dog's already lunging, and I'm trying to pull a treat out. Well, I've missed the fact where I can get his nose, or her nose, and I've also um, used it too late, right? So everything's already happened. So there, there really becomes no training or coaching exercise. The second component is, if the dog's not responding, you need to design, as a practice, a different distance, a greater distance. So this, again, becomes a calibration of how excited my dog is around vehicles. Now, what I mean by that is you may actually have to drive down to a parking lot where there's lots of room near a road and start with the car at 100 feet. So practicing this at about 100 feet, 
Same thing though, mosaic, sit, getting their attention. 100 feet away, the car's going by. I know that this uh, scent is working at about 100 feet and I can create some of these positive experiences and still working on that counter conditioning. Then what I want to do is slowly close that distance. So eventually I can get myself 20, 10 or 5 feet from the car uh, or getting to that area where I'm on a sidewalk as the cars pass by and I can use this redirection uh, counter conditioning technique. So the scent motivation typically will work. Sometimes you've got to change it up. Maybe it's a hot dog, a little piece of cheese, something your dog's not accustomed to. The second part is uh, creating the behavior before the stimulus passes. And the third component is use this as a calibration. You might have to create uh, more distance in order to accomplish this same task and then slowly close the gap as you get closer, uh, building all of those positive rewards um, and, and experiences between you and your dog using this training exercise. All right, guys, get out there and practice these tips. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next webinar.